This is the GS1000 that I fixed the spark plug hole on with a helicoil. It, uh, it worked, it didn't work at first, and we had a valve sticking out in the way, which we did hit, and uh, ended up not damaging it, which was good, but we did bore a bit into the top of the piston. Well, you can't see it on here, but... So I ended up pulling the head off, thinking that the helicoil didn't work right because the top thread didn't seat properly. And after we did that, I got the valves red redone, resurfaced and all that. I'm not really sure what they do, the valves pull them out, clean them up, and grind them down a bit and he, the mechanic that did that ended up getting the spark plug in the hole and now they thread in every time but they're tighter than an aluminum thread so you actually have to use a wrench to put it in so if that scares you when you do that that's probably why anyway now that I've got the had the head pulled off I have to readjust the valves these are shim valves I've never dealt with them before I've only had rocker arm bikes so I'm learning about that and it's kind of a hassle, it's kind of cool, but it's kind of a hassle too. So <clears throat> you need to get the proper size shims. And they're Dawn at Universal's charging me 10 bucks a piece. So I pulled this one out of here. This was a 2.4 millimeter that I was testing out. I think the original shim in this first cylinder intake valve was a 2.85 mil so there's quite a big difference there when you're dealing with thousands of inches so I tried this one and the clearance is a bit too big it's 0.127 millimeters with this shim in so I'm gonna try the 2.45 shim and I'm just gonna slide that guy in there real gentle and it's gonna fall back I'm gonna fart around with it because I'm using one hand Hopefully I can get it in. There we go. See the tool there that's depressing the valve, the tappet seat there? I thought I had to buy a special with the Suzuki tool to do this job. Uh, it was 25 bucks. So you're in it for a bit of an investment if you want to do your own shim valves. But I had no choice because I didn't have the bike at the shop and didn't want to go in there. So. Got that thing kind of sitting in there. Let's see if the valve will push it down when I raise that up. And I've noticed when I'm checking these that I like to turn the motor over. Again, one full rotation. So I'm using my wrench here on the camshaft just to turn that over. Or not on the cam, on the crankshaft. Yes, wrench is with the valve turning the valve. Or the cam lobe, it's called. Turning and then when it's sticking straight up in line with the with the head of the bike. You know you good. So that's that's about right. Now I'm gonna take my feeler gauges. When I had that 2.4 in there, I was measuring five thou of an inch or 0.127 mil. So I'm gonna jam that guy in there. And I'm not measuring that anymore, which makes sense, because I put 0.05 mil above. So really what I should be getting, if you think about it, here is 0.5 mil. So I take 1.27 minus 0.5 mil from that. I should be getting 0.7 approximately. That's about 3 thou. So is that, that 3 thou should fit in there. And it doesn't. <clears throat> 2, 2.5 thou fits right in. That's okay, that's within the clearance specs. They wanted 0 0.03 or 0 0.08 mil, and uh, that's what I got now. So I'm going to leave that 0.45 in there, and I'm going to check the 2 intake, which also had needed quite a small shim after the valves were redone. There you go. Hopefully that helps you out if you're trying to do this.